What is up, guys? This is Max. Thank you for coming back to another video on my channel, Duffy's Dinos. And today we're just going to be talking about setting up tanks in general. Um, so why this is in general is because here I'm going to give you a few tips that are basically general tips on how you can set your tanks up for almost not every do your research species that is out there that you can keep as a pet so let's get right into it so the first thing we are going to talk about is substrate because that's where i start from um i basically worry about everything else later um what i am going to use basically for a bearded dragon this is for me since i own desert species at the moment um, bearded dragon and a leopard gecko. They're both arid. They don't like humidity as much um, So you're going to want something that's not going to kind of create humidity um, but Still be a natural substrate um, You can use paper towel you can use reptile carpet But boy oh boy will I tell you how many people are going to yell at you if you use sand reptile carpet um, because they're just bad. Honestly, I'd say you either use paper towel or you use bioactive substrate. That's the only two. <laughs> it's the only two. There's slate. You can use slate, but there's research that goes against how it affects their bones and how they move around. Let me get out of that light. <laughs> um, but yeah, a lot of what you're going to want to use is like a bioactive substrate. And especially if you like to plant your enclosures or make them look all nice and planty. Like this one. What we have here is coconut fiber. So it is mixed with a coconut fiber reptile soil mixture. Uh, so basically a little bit of moist soil and a lot of this coconut husk kind of fiber um, as you can see kind of has those little hairs in it um, like coconut fiber hairs and it kind of does 50 50 work so no matter what species you're going to be keeping it's going to either hold in moisture depending on how you use it or completely not have any moisture because of the lack of moisture in the enclosure so if we flip this camera temps at 110 and humidity's at 17 percent a lot of you are like oh my gosh like 110 um that is pretty hot <laughs> um what i am meaning to show you is the 17 humidity while i would like to keep it in a perfect world like how my cool side is like a like a 25 30 to 40% is perfect for these guys, Peter Dragon specifically. Um, and you're not gonna wanna like spray this tank down. You're not gonna wanna do anything like that. Uh, the only time you're gonna wanna spray them down is when they're shedding and that will help them get a little bit of shed off. I give mine a bath so she can kinda wiggle around it <laughs> and she will. I mean, Peter and Dragons will love to take a bath. I mean, unless you don't acclimate them to it and they'll be very frustrated by the water until you let them just kind of relax in it for a while um, with support a lot of people use like little rocks and things to kind of let them get out of it uh, but anyway anyway uh, since i'm rambling on what i've used in here is coconut fiber reptile soil and a jurassic naturalist substrate and i messed up and i wanted the rocks and stuff to be on top but i accidentally mixed it in so I'm a big dummy and it wasn't super consequential because my humidity <laughs> didn't mind and it, it was like I will stay low even though you use low substrate so here is the big point that I'm trying to make is the fact that the substrate can be used for our boil species and desert species so no matter what you're keeping you could do either or you just have to mist for arboreal and not for desert. 
Um, so the next thing we're going to talk about is the lighting. And with lighting, I will show you guys that I have a bunch, a bunch of lights. This one's not on, but there's a UVB, a basking bulb, another basking bulb, and a heat emitter. Granted, it is winter here, so it's a little colder, so I have to kind of, you know, raise the temperatures a little bit. Um, and sometimes I have to work out the kinks because it's not perfect every time. So I uh, have to either turn my AC on, which I'm about to do because it's hot, um, or, you know, air, some, air it out somehow. Anyway, with the lighting, you're going to want to use, depending on your enclosure and where you set your basking bulb up, or where you set your basking spot up, <laughs> Uh, you're going to want to use something like a 75 watt to a 150 watt basking bulb and your heat emitter you could just use a 100 watt if you're using a heat emitter uh, i found some people find it sufficient to just temperature control the room and then keep one light in one side and like a, a tube uvb light these to go across the entire width of the enclosure doesn't have to go across the entire width just three-fourths i think they say is perfect and that's what mine tube light is it's about three-fourths of the enclosure and because being a dragons love the, the sun you know they they worship this thing and not necessarily worship but there's many reptiles like the gnolls that worship it tenfold so yeah that is your lighting and number three we'll go with is gonna be just your general setup how you're gonna to wanna to put things in here. As you can see, I have my bright spot, my heat spot. I have a tile underneath to catch some warmth, a tree for her to climb on. And I have a second basking spot, which she is underneath and she dug herself a hole. And then we move over to the middle I keep my food in the middle and towards the cold end we have multiple hides and places to climb and get up and a good gradient from side to side and that's another thing that we'll touch on is the fact that while this is very hot this side's only about 80 degrees or 85 degrees how you're going to keep it you're going to want a thermal gradient because that's what these animals need they want to be able to go bask for energy and come back down and go to a cool side where they can relax so they're not just sitting in a heat spot all day if they are it's not hot enough um, do your research on this um, and what temperatures to keep them at but i would say a hot spot of 100 to 110 um, at the most honestly is what you need um, 110 any more than that it's insane um, and she'll she'll be over in the cool side so definitely make sure your temperatures are on point for these animals because without it they will die so <laughs> we don't want that um, you can set these up any way you want as long as you have a couple hides, a basking spot, you can use a water bowl, you don't have to. A good substrate for burrowing in case it's a female and they want to lay eggs or what so have you. And a bunch of like thermometers or a thermostat set up so you can uh, fully document what's going on in your tiny ecosystem. Tiny. <laughs> and so yeah, so that's the bearded dragon portion. And let's move on to the leopard gecko portion. So down here we got my leopard gecko Trixie. She's in a similar type enclosure. I did a review on this. This is the Ecoflex, same one. Ooh. And so what we have here is you can see there's more cover. They are more of like a animal that gets spooked. Although they're from the desert, they're not the same as our bearded dragon buddies. They don't like to be out like them. Some of them do. Uh, my girlfriend does have a couple of leopard geckos and they 
adore being outside, they adore just being looked at, they adore looking at things. So um, right now, <laughs> um, if you can see, my leopard gecko is enjoying me doing my videos. So she come out to talk. And there she is, guys. Look at those eyes. So beautiful. I'm telling you guys. No more beautiful animal than the leopard gecko. I swear to you guys, if you get one, you'll love it. You'll never regret it. And um, it'll be your best friend for like 15 years, dog. So, I mean, same thing with the bearded dragon. Um, since she's out, and we'll be able to show you that she hides in a log. So, unlike my bearded dragon, she's going to seek the comfort of these tight places and these different kinds of things that make her feel comfortable. I mean, I have a hide here, a hide here, a hide there, one in the middle, one on the side, and that log back there. And it just allows her to feel comfortable wherever she goes and just kind of live her little life. I don't bother her, she don't bother me. I give her food and she left. She left. Yeah. You can see guys, uh, my little buddy's coming out to hang out, which we had not had in these videos, which is very cool. I get to spotlight my leopard gecko in this video. Um, but yeah, so these care, this care is going to be slightly similar because they're arid. Obviously, you're not going to want a low humidity around 20 to 40. It is perfect. You're going to want a human hive because these guys will use it. They'll find it and they'll use it. Um, they are not going to like it as hot, so... It's definitely been a challenge keeping a leopard gecko in the same room with a bearded dragon. It's very hot in here. So what you're going to want to do for the lighting for these guys is a small light. This is a 40 watt shining on the heat side with like a 90 up to 90 degree basking spot. Ground level being like an 88 and this side being an 80 degree, uh, sometimes 78 to 79 so that it's nice and comfy for her. Brick echoes will get heat stressed and they'll <laughs> they'll jump in, in their water bowl if they're too hot. So if it's way too hot, you'll know because your leopard gecko will be sitting in its water. Um, and this really stresses these guys out. So try your best not to, and you'll be handy dandy. I mean, if you keep the little humidity low, you give them a correct light cycle, that's all they need. Some people say they don't need UVB, and I call bull. I think it's very beneficial for any animal you get to have a UV light to shining red on them because no matter what, their body is going to need to do that process of making the calcium or using the calcium. And you're going to want to dust their food with calcium, same with bearded dragons, always calcium. And you can use, um, I will even put a link probably to a good calcium supplement that's amazingly cheap. It's, flu it's uh, Fluckers. Uh, you could use with or without D3. And it's very beneficial for leopard geckos because they're not going to be out in your UVB light enough to benefit from its calcium um, creating or whatever using, whatever they call it. Um, so it's always a good idea to have a little bowl that has um, calcium powder in it and that way they can kind of look at it and they will. They'll do the same thing with their water. They'll kind of look at it and it's very beautiful and they're very beautiful animals and I just want to end the video because my lights have gone off now with the fact that these animals are absolutely amazing. And anybody who thinks they want to get one, whether a leopard gecko or a bearded dragon, I fully encourage because it is an amazing experience that you will love. You will just 
find the most enrichment out of it and you'll want to give the world to your pet so yeah guys hope you enjoyed this video this was about basically some very general key points in both of these animal setups that maybe you could use maybe you could you know whatever so leave a like comment subscribe all the good stuff this has been max that was trixie and ragu and this is our family so far hopefully a new animal coming soon and yeah guys i will see you later be sure to leave that like see you later